Hello everybody. Welcome to my channel. Today we'll be talking about dental wedges. Now this topic forms a very important short note, long question and parts of it become important viva questions. So listen to the lecture carefully. All the data in this video has been taken from my textbook. The link is given in the description box below and the book is easily available in Amazon. Now coming to our lecture, what are dental wedges? Wedges are basically triangular shaped devices used to create space between the teeth. Now there are two types of wedge separators, wooden or plastic wedges which we routinely use in our clinics. Then there's a device known as Elliot separator. Coming to classification of wedges. Wedges can be classified on the basis of method of fabrication as custom made wedges that means the ones which we make ourselves and prefabricated wedges. On the basis of material used for fabrication they may be wooden wedges or plastic or synthetic wedges. Now in the picture you can see a prefabricated wedge which is of plastic material. Coming to the technique of wedge placement. The first step is to select appropriate wedge and then we modify its shape according to the shape of the embrasure. Now the length of the wedge should be such that it does not irritate the cheek or the gum and this happens when it is about half an inch long. Now grasp the wedge with help of the pliers and insert it in the embrasure. Now this embrasure is the facial embrasure you can see. We can insert it in the lingual embrasure also. Normally we insert it in the embrasure which is larger and mostly that is the facial embrasure. The wedge should be inserted in such a manner that it comes to lie gingival to the gingival margin of the cavity. Now this is the gingival margin of the cavity and your wedge it should be lying gingival to it. That means below the gingival margin of the cavity. Now once the wedge is placed it should be firm and stable. Now how do we check for the tightness of the wedge? We, take, we do that with help of an explorer. The explorer is pressed against the matrix band at the gingival margin of the cavity. You can see it in the picture and to check the tightness of the matrix to the margin. We have to ensure that the matrix is tightly held against the margin of the cavity and this happens with help of a wedge. Now what happens if there is improper wedge placement? It can result in firstly proximal denting or concavity. Now I want you to look at the picture. In the first figure, you can observe that this is a gingival margin and the wedge is placed below the margin. That is the correct position. In the second figure, you can see gingival margin and the wedge is placed above the margin. This can result in proximal denting or concavity in the restoration. It also results in gingival overhang. Now the wedge is meant to be placed below the gingival margin of the proximal cavity. If not so, then the band will not be held tightly against the tooth. Therefore, it would allow amalgam to escape below the gingival margin during condensation. This causes gingival excess leading to irritation of the gingival tissues. And this condition is known as gingival overhang. Coming to functions of wedges. This is an important short note. Firstly, they create space between the teeth to compensate for the thickness of the matrix band. That means they separate the teeth slightly. Secondly, they immobilize the matrix band. Thirdly, they closely press the matrix band against the tooth in the gingival area of the preparation to prevent any restorative material from escaping below the band. We just read about it. Fourthly, they maintain the health of the interdental gingiva by preventing the restorative material from impinging into it or getting pushed into it. Fifthly, they protect the gingiva from unexpected trauma. Coming to the modifications in wedge placement. Now this is a very important and a common viva question. Piggyback wedging. Now this method of wedging is very useful in the cases of gingival recession of the interproximal tissues. Now in such cases what happens is when we place the wedge it lies quite below the gingival margin of the proximal cavity. Now if you look at the photograph you can see this first wedge here it is lying so much below the gingival margin. Now this is not sufficient so we have to place another wedge smaller in size 
which is piggybacked on the first one to fill the space and press the matrix band against the margin. Here you can see now these two wedges together are pushing the matrix band against the gingival margin of the tooth. This is known as piggyback wedging. Next is double wedging. Now in this method of wedging is useful in a clinical situation of wide facial lingual proximal box. If you look at the photograph, you will see that two wedges are being inserted, one from the facial side and other from the lingual side. Now what role do they play? Now using these two wedges, it ensures that the gingival corners of the wide proximal box do not remain deficient. That means if this is the proximal box, these gingival corners, they will not remain deficient because there is a wedge present on either side. The third modification is called wedge wedging. Now this method is mostly used on the mesial surface of the maxillary first premolar. Now what happens is that there, there may be a concavity or a depression present on the mesial surface of the first premolar. Now in such a case, to wedge a matrix band tight against the tooth, a second wedge may be inserted between the first and the band. Now if you look at the picture, you can see this is a second wedge and this has been inserted between the first wedge and the matrix band. Now this makes the matrix band tight against the tooth. This is what we want. This completes all the aspects of our topic on wedges. In the next lecture, we will talk about different types of mattresses and how we use them. I hope you enjoyed your lecture. Do like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.